Falkland Islands are one of Britain's earliest colonies. They are 300 miles from the extreme tip of South America, only 300 miles out in the South Atlantic from the Argentine, land of the gaucho, the hot plain, and the beef herd. In the month of August, we had a sore storm and were driven in among certain oils never before discovered. That was John Jane in 1592. These are still the seas of the high wind and fickle weather, the seas of the whale and sea lion, the seas of the albatross and the penguin. Though far away, the Falklands are a name well known because in both the last two great wars, battles were fought in these waters and the British cruisers landed their wounded here. It is a land of rocky outcrops, of tussock grass, of peat bog, a treeless, bleak land, not for agriculture, but for pasture but withal a countryside not much different from the Scottish Hebrides, hilly and craggy coasted, with only 2,300 people in 4,600 square miles, only one person to every two square miles of land. And of these people, half live in the capital, Stanley, the island's largest harbour. Here in the summer, which starts in November or December, the gardens, protected from the winds by the wooden houses with corrugated iron roofs, have taught flowers to grow as in an English garden. Yet in the wintry months of June, sea lions are on the beach. In Stanley is Government House. Since 1949, the colony has elected members to the Legislative Council. The British Governor is President with a casting vote only. The old town hall was a wooden building and was destroyed by fire. A new one was completed in 1950. In Stanley, there are two schools, the post office, and the other official and commercial buildings the cathedral, the tabernacle, and places of worship for all. The entire area outside Port Stanley is called the camp. Between the rocky outcrops, the inland soil is mostly peat, and it is this which the Falklander uses as fuel. From an early age, the Falklander becomes an expert cutter and stacker of peat. Mr. Peter Luger, at 75 years of age, can still put in his day at the peat bog cutting with an ease that comes from experience. The peat is rickled with the help of his daughter and her husband and family. This rickling is to let the air get into the stacks and dry the peat. The stacks are usually left for a year before burning. Out on this wild moorland, too, are the sheep farms which carry out the Falklands' only industry. Here's one of the largest, the Fitzroy settlement. The manager's house, nearby the married shepherd's quarters. Each of these farms has its grocery store, kept well stocked so that the settlement is as self-sufficient as possible for man and beast. Sheep are killed regularly for meat. Mutton is only threepence a pound on the islands, though bacon is practically unobtainable and costs about four and sixpence a pound. All vegetables are dear because they have to be brought in. A freezing plant is being established on the islands so that in the future lamb and mutton can be exported as meat. Meanwhile, the wool is exported, and once a year during dipping time there is great activity through the islands. As many as 80,000 sheep on one farm are herded through the troughs. The export of wool is the Falklands' largest industry. It represents approximately 400,000 pounds a year revenue, 
in a country which spends only about 300,000 pounds on all its imports. Once a year, the bales of wool come out to the harbour from the Falkland farms to be sent away in the Falkland Island Company's steamer, SS Fitzroy. This wool is all going to the United Kingdom. The elder women of the Falkland Islands, some of Scottish, some of Yorkshire, and some of Norwegian descent, have brought a knowledge of spinning and weaving wool to the formation of a guild. They are developing an industry which may in years to come produce famous cloths and homespun woolens as they do in the Hebrides. They are passing on the craft to the younger women. The spinning wheels in use go back to early Scottish, Norwegian and Danish families who originally settled in the islands. These articles woven by members of the guild are made from the local wool and dyed with local herbs. Sweaters, mittens and thick woolen stockings are spun and knitted for the men who take part in expeditions to the Antarctic. An aeroplane service to and from outlying parts of the islands has been started as part of a strenuous attempt to tackle the difficulties of communications because there are no roads on the Falklands except in Port Stanley and immediately around it. There is to be a meeting of the Legislative Council in Stanley and the representative for this outlying part of the Western Falklands is being flown there. At the same time at Stanley, one of the social events of the year is taking place, the Sports Association Annual Meeting. This usually starts on Boxing Day and goes on for two or three days. The whole town turns out, joined by the people from outlying parts of the islands. It's the greatest event of the year and is held at Christmas, which is summertime in these parts. Human athletics, serious and comic, take place as well as horse racing. The chief event is the Governor's Cup, a 700 yards horse race. The Governor of the Islands, Sir Miles Clifford, takes a personal interest in this event and congratulates the winner. The Falklanders are proud of their horsemanship gained at an early age from the practical need to ride over the rough country. The ladies' trotting race. Any horse that goes into a canter must be turned round before carrying on. The mail for the islands is in, brought from Montevideo by the SS Fitzroy. The distribution of mail from the outside world to the people of these islands is an important affair to all. The original post office was destroyed with the town hall, so a gymnasium was used until the new one was built. From the post office, the Stanley residents collect their news from foreign parts and take it home to read and digest by their peat fires. Andreas Bonner, a shepherd from the North Settlement, will take back mail for all his people. His settlement is a five-hour horse ride to the north. It will be nightfall before he gets there.
Falklands are islands of contrast, of wind and sunshine, of shepherds and seafaring folk, and of names that ring, the black-browed albatross and sea lion isle, Bluff Cove and San Salvador, McBride Head and Port San Carlo, where Spanish, French, Scandinavian, Scots and English have with rock, sea and tussock grass become the Falklanders. Thank you.